Good morning. We all stand up.
unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first of the month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your couch for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. He shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening, and they shall take the blood and strike it on the two sides, on the two side posts, and on the upper door posts of the houses, wherein they shall eat. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast of with roast with fire, and unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden all sodden at all with water, but roast with fire. His head with his head with his legs, and with the per per pertuit thereof, pertuitus rather thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it in the morning shall be burned with fire. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, and your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It's the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and she will smite all firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. Here it is. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day be, able, be unto you for a memorial. And ye shall keep it a feast of the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep the feast by an ordinance forever. And when I see the blood, 
I will pass over, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy I want to talk about this in this call this morning. You talk to me. A completely new beginning. A complete new beginning. When we look at this particular story or parable or teaching of God to us, from salvation, from slavery rather, traveling to salvation. We see now the heart of, at the heart of Exodus, there are a people who have been bound beyond their, uh, their ability to break free. And if the truth be told, there are those of us at one point or another in our lives, we have been bound so by so far to the point of our own physical ability would have never allowed us to break free. We've been bound, some of us have been bound by marriages, by spouses, by friends, by loved ones, by church folk. Some of us have been bound by our bank accounts, our houses, our cars, the things that we possess. But the truth of the matter is, there has been something at some point or another that we allowed us to, to take more precedence in our lives more than God. And the sad part is, the sad part is this, for those of us who have come to the knowledge of what it was that was binding us and that was keeping us from doing the will of God, now we see others who are falling in the same trap and we won't even do anything to try to help them out. Moses, watch this. God now is getting ready to, to pull Moses uh, 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 and, and let him understand, son, what I told you. If I told you I was able to do it, I'm really able to do it. If I told you that I was going to send you to Egypt and you were going to give Pharaoh my word, my, my command, what I told you, and if I told you that I will, I will help you, I will be with you, and I will make my word come to pass, he says, look, Moses, just wait on me. I'm coming. Matter of fact, it was in Exodus chapter number 3. Moses was looking for a sign. God gave Moses a sign by a burning bush. The bush was burning, but the bush wasn't on fire. There are some of us in here. There are some of us in this room today. We need to come to the realization that we're trying to wait. We're trying to make God do what we want God to do when we want God to do it. If you wait on God, God will give you a new beginning. God will give you a fresh start that even your own self, you won't be able to comprehend. You will have to just walk as God gives you steps to take. You pop, you follow him. You move as he moves. When he stops, you stop. Whatever God is doing in your life, you got to understand, I cannot get in front of that's where we mess up too many times. We get try to get in front of God. Amen. And now we're telling God which way to go. Watch this. Watch this. The importance of this day was because God was setting Moses up to help him to understand that deliverance was around the corner. And if there's anybody in this room other than me that can testify to the fact that I thank God for his power of which he has to deliver. He delivered us from some stuff. There's some stuff that we used to do. Now we don't do it, not because we can't, but because we have no desire. Come a little bit closer. That's nothing but deliverance. Right. Folk that used to make you mad, you used to turn your nose up at them. Now you can smile, hug their neck, shake their hand. That's because you've been delivered. Right. What does it mean to be delivered? To be delivered, it simply means that I'm no longer bound by what used to hold me. The Jews called it the Passover. But for the Christians, for the Christians, it's a mere remembrance of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary's cross for us for the forgiveness of our sins. It was, it was one of the great uh, speakers and, and theologians, uh, Dr. D.L. Moody, made the statement that Exodus chapter 12 is one of the most important chapters in the Bible. Because it put, it paints the picture of the power of the blood. I don't know about you, but y'all real quiet on the right now. Maybe you've never experienced the power of the blood. The hymn author said that it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. Listen about the blood. He said the blood, it doesn't matter if it saved you 20 years ago, 50 years ago, 20 seconds ago, or right now. The blood will never lose. I want to 
suggest to you today that if you're going to ever receive deliverance, if you're going to ever walk into a new day, it's going to be because of the blood of Jesus. And you 
find yourself trying to find something or somebody that was just like what he just brought you out of, chances are it was something about the situation you like. You might as well stay with the one you was with. I don't want nobody to beat my head, but you just left him. Got somebody else to beat you. You should stay with the one you were with. And quit calling the police. God is saying, listen. He said, listen to me, y'all. I want to bring you out. I really want to set you free. You can begin to do it after salvation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Speaking of a little new beginning, people sometimes say, if only I could begin again. All right. uh, the songwriter says, if I could turn back the hands of time. The fact of the matter is, we cannot turn back the hands of time. Amen. Amen. But you can stop where you are yeah. All right. and then start where you are. Stop what it is that you're doing that does not please God and then start doing what it is that God gives you instruction to do. All right. We see at John 3 and 16, he says to us that if uh, we would accept his son, that a new beginning is just around the corner. Amen. For he shall not perish, but have ever Lasting life. That's a new beginning, y'all. A new beginning. Not only did he tell them that we would give them a new month, a new year, and a new life. But if you look at verses 3 through 7, you'll discover that a new beginning, you must have faith in the blood of the Lamb. My brothers and sisters, you cannot just say, Oh, haphazardly, I'm going to accept Jesus as my Savior and don't have no faith in him as a Savior. All right, all right. He wants you to understand here today, this is what he wants you to understand, that faith with our works is still dead. Right. If you're going to say you have faith in him, I just had a conversation Friday about faith with somebody, and I told him that faith is not some blind leap in the dark, but faith is saying, look, God, I don't know how, I don't know when, but I'm going to stay here, stand here, sit here, trust you, knowing that you will show up. All right, all right. Come, on, Come a little bit closer. I'll make five. If I can get just four more of y'all that don't mind, I know you got your mask on, don't want me to say nothing, but just testify with me real quick and just say, if you can feel this way, if you can feel like I do, just shout, I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Oh, look. 
Peter said that it must be perfect and without blemish. John 1 and 29 suggests to us that there's only one perfect lamb that has no blemish. And that's Jesus Christ. The Revelation 5, Revelation rather 5 and 8 suggests to us that the lamb is now seated on his throne in heaven. Uh, my brothers and sisters, the whole assembly had to kill the lamb. All right. The hundreds of lambs became one lamb in God's sight. Amen. I want to suggest to you today, I want to suggest to you today that God can give all of us a command, yeah, to give uh, a certain amount or to do a certain thing. But if we all begin to work together and do what God says do, God is not looking at the 40 different ones of us that are doing the same thing. All he looks at is the fact that they're operating at once. And when we come together, the Bible says they're strict in numbers. I need somebody in this room that know that when we all think you're ever cash, get together, what a time that'll be. Because we'll see how God works on our behalf. Right. Family can't get together because everybody got their own agenda. Churches won't prosper because everybody got their own agenda. Won't nobody come because there's too many folk in here that got their own agenda. Not in here. I'm talking about the church in general, y'all. Too many times, too many times, our agendas turn folk away. It don't just happen at church. It's happening in your job. It happens when you ride up and down the road in your car. Some of us, we can't even get along with the folk in our house. Thank God I live by myself. There are some of us. We don't know what it means to help each other. We always want to be helped. My brothers and sisters, we learn to do more than what we ask others to do for us. Life will be a whole lot easier. Look what he says to him. One lamb per house. Quit trying to be greedy. God says all you need is one lamb per house. Every house has to have a lamb. Any family of the Jews could have refused to accept, to participate or to do it God's way. But the result would have been that when the death angel came, he would have paid them a visit. Brothers and sisters, I want to suggest to you today that even in 2022, every house ought to have a lamb. Amen. Lamb that was hewn out of the mountains. Lamb that came rolling down through Babylon. The lamb that was despised and rejected. The lamb that was others bruised for our iniquities. Who are you talking about, Pastor? Every house ought to have Jesus in the house. The lamb had to be accepted and taken individually. Brothers and sisters, quit trying to mooch off of what somebody else has. God says there's enough of me to go around for everybody. I don't have to be jealous of you. You don't have to be jealous of me. You don't have to want what I got. I don't have to want what you got. Because if I trust God, do his will, read his word, talk, have a talk with him, everything I heard him say, if I delight myself in him, that he will give me the desires of my heart. Come here, baby, y'all don't understand that. He said, if you humble yourself before the Lord, in due time, he'll exalt you. Learn how to wait yeah. on the Lord. Jacob, uh, Israel rather, had come to Egypt as a family. But God was delivering a nation. A nation was made up of families. Uh, and families are made up of individuals. Try again, nations are made up of families. Yeah. Families are made up of individuals. Yeah. And I bet I can have all of y'all to a group and when I tell you the family uh, is a precious thing. Yeah. God himself created 
the family unit. Now, if God created the family unit, who are you and who am I to go against what God has created? Right. Uh, the Bible says that there is a way that seems right under man, but the end thereof is destruction, which simply means when I try to tear down what God has put together, destruction is just around the corner. Your church, your family, or not anyone else can force you to accept the gift of God, which is by faith Jesus Christ through salvation. Of uh, the blood of the Lamb. It has to be received individually. The Lamb. But what the Bible says, the Lamb had to be roasted on fire. Leaven. He says the feast that should have unleavened bread. Now the word leaven simply speaks of sin. He says to us that when we come before his presence, we come as sinners. But when we leave, we ought not be the same way. He says, come to me and leave your sin right here with me. Right. Fire speaks of judgment. Without the blood, there is judgment. But with the blood, there is eternal life. Is there anybody here great, grateful for the grace of Jesus Christ when he shed his blood on Calvary that told me and told you I don't have to stand in judgment, but if I accept him, he gives me his grace, and God's grace is better than any amount of money you can have. His grace is better than any education you can have. His grace is better than any spouse you can have. God's grace is the best thing that could ever happen to me and you. I'm free now. I'm done because y'all tired, and I'm not going to hold you too much longer. Let me tell you something here. The Bible says to us uh, that the blood, when God sees the blood, that he would pass over. Amen. Amen. He also lets them know uh, that if, yeah, there's not enough in your house to eat the lamb, and there's not enough in this house to eat a whole lamb. The Bible says y'all ought to come together. All right. Amen. Look what I like about God. Look what I love about yeah. God. He says you can come together and eat, but not only can you come together and eat, but you can then still split the blood. Yeah. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I thank my God that he sent his son Jesus, and Jesus wasn't selfish. He split his blood among all of us. He gave you his blood. He gave you his blood. He gave all
has no power until you accept it. Be obedient. You'll discover if you keep reading in Exodus, they were obedient to the word of God. They were obedient.
Lord, you say, where two or three will be gathered, you will be in the midst, Lord. Lord, if we come to you on communion Sunday today, Lord, we ask you to be in the midst of the day, Lord. Lord, you know the desires of every heart in this house right now, Lord. You know the burdens that are faced by everyone here, Lord.
I'm doing great than you. 